Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Hopefully everybody's having a great day and things are going well. Anyway, I've been waiting for this for a few days. I bit the bullet. I've been eyeing this for a couple of weeks now and I finally got it. it took a few, took over a week before I got it because I guess they have um, a hold on terms of the shipments on it. The box is a little beaten up, so hopefully that's not a problem. A little surprised by that from B&H Photo, that it would look like that. But hopefully everything is packaged well and it wouldn't be a problem. So let me open this up. Well, I've got my sales receipt. Okay, put that aside. Well, good, plenty of bubble wrap in here. And there's two packages in here, just like I was expecting. The first one is the camera itself, Sony ZV-1. And I got the other one. I couldn't resist it. I got the, uh, the vlogger kit with it. So it's a special grip that can also be used as a mini tripod. It looks like it also comes with an SD card as well. Okay, so let me open up each individual package. There's nothing else really in here except for a B&H photo advertisement. Well, I wonder how many other people actually got this as the first ones actually paid for it as opposed to getting the ones that they could actually, you know, review for free. Of course, they have to return them from what I understand. But let me open it up, see if it's any different than what I've seen on a couple of the online videos I looked at. Standard paperwork. Now, I've looked at this manual already. As I've said in previous videos, um, I always try to find the manuals online. It's not a very thick manual, this sheet here sort of a getting started instructions gives you just brief information not a lot and that's available on the Sony website if you're interested in looking at it for yourself let's turn this around take a look at it so um, I'm gonna start with the camera itself let's see what we got here hmm. well it is somewhat light I was anticipating it being lighter based upon what people were saying. You know, it's a, a decent weight. I like it. It actually feels good. It's got the grip here from what I understand. So you can turn it around and use it for vlogging. I mean, that's the whole idea is it's focused on the vlogger from what everybody tells us. It would help to hold it right side up, wouldn't it? This review is not going to be comparing this camera to other Sony cameras. Matter of fact, I don't even own another Sony camera. I have a Panasonic Lumix FZ1000 camera DSLR that this video is being recorded on. It's a large bulky camera and it has a lot of the same limitations that this little camera has but I'm hoping that some of the things that are here are pluses and I'll talk about them. This was purchased to be my backup and also purchased to be my quick access, the one that I would use to go to when I had to quickly get one out and do something, or when I'm doing a two camera video. It's very important in some cases to get two different perspectives on something. Doing YouTube video content creation, which is what I'm gonna focus this on. My focus will not only be on video content creation, but video content creation being a tech YouTuber. I do a few other things, but technology thing is the main focus that I go after. So that's what this video is going to focus on in terms of how I review this. This first video is going to be first of a, probably two, maybe three, depending on whether or not I get comments requesting some more detailed feature reviews. Let me look at what's, what else we have in the box. And we got the battery. A lot of complaints about this battery being too small. I've already gone ahead and ordered some additional batteries. So this is the standard Sony battery that in their existing line of compact cameras. Apparently it doesn't have that much of a charge capability, or at least it doesn't have that much current capability to make the charge last longer. So I'm anticipating I'll get at 4K less than an hour out of this one battery. We will see, I will test that. And what do we got here? We've got a micro USB it looks like to full standard USB. Now, there's a lot of complaints about this that I saw online. The fact that they didn't switch to USB-C. That itself doesn't bother me as much as the potential of loss of performance when they do come out with the feature that they've announced but they have not released yet, which is gonna to be totally software from what I understand, where you can turn this camera, which is another big positive that I had in mind for it, 
into a standard webcam, but a really nice looking webcam. If I'm doing something that it's very important that you see what the webcam is seeing, or if I mm. ever decide to go into some live broadcast, that's what I'd like to use. Camera that's of that quality that is capable of easily becoming a USB camera. And then finally, it looks like they have this little uh, wind muff. Some people refer to it as a dead cat. I think my family might object to that if I say that too much. You've got to remove the little protector here from the hot shoe. You have to open this up to really get that out of there. How about that? Is it really blocking or just my imagination? Oh, it probably wasn't, but it was easier to grab it once the thing was open. And since it has a triple microphone in here that's directional, it's directing towards the front of the camera from what I've read, this is to actually go right over that going on to the hot shoe and to cover up that microphone and to block the wind. Now I've had experience with these before and uh, they usually work very well in terms of breaking up the wind. So we'll test that a little bit tomorrow if the wind is out. Let me uh, put the battery in. Very similar to my uh, Panasonic camera that I'm looking at right now. Opens up and you have both the SD card and the battery that both go into this together. Oh, before I do this, let me leave that like that for now. Let me close the door. I'm going to have to put an SD card in here before I do anything else, right? Supposedly, my vlogger kit, which I'll just go over now, that has the SD card in it. So in the vlogger kit, oh, it needs to be cut. Oh, little instruction booklet. What is this? I guess this is how to pair it up. And it looks like it is to pair it up. It shows you the buttons to press simultaneously. I'll just leave that in there for now. It's out of here. Another box. Box within a box. What do we have in here? The other one didn't have the... Uh... Yeah, it did. The SD card was actually in this other box. It's only a 64 gigabyte though, and it is the uh, it's XC2. So that's an expensive SD card. That one is the highest end SD card you can with SC2. So that's good. Just wish it was a higher capacity. I'll leave that out. Actually, let me put that in here now. And it is the SC2. You can tell because of the two rows of pins that the uh, SD card has that it's the higher speed one. But you can tell with the two rows of the golden pins that they have there. Let me put that now inside the camera. Should go only one way. Let me try it this way first. No, that's not the way. It's got to be this way. This. So now it's all set. I'll turn it out in a minute. Let me uh, take a look at this first. The vlogger's little mini tripod. What do we got in here? A bunch of stuff. Okay. Well, it's got a little carrying case to it. Here's the battery. So I'm going to have to put this uh, battery in there. It looks like a standard 2032. It's got a nice little... It's synthetic, not anything uh, fancy, really. Well, there we go. We can actually control all the key functions to it. Take photos, we can start movies. We can lock this so that the keys themselves won't accidentally get hit as you're holding it. That's, the, that's what that, that lock is. And I believe this one is for the, uh, the bokeh. And this thing should open up into a, like a little tripod. Take it like this. And at first I wasn't going to get this, but then I caved at the last minute and said, hey, with this being only two thirds of its normal price by buying it together with the camera, well, I wouldn't want to regret it later. So I went ahead and bought it. Okay, let me uh, turn this on. I understand if you open the door, does that work the first time too? I open this up and I turn it front. Yeah, it turned on automatically. So now it's going to go through all of the menus. So let me go through those. Oh, it's not touch screen. That, that's the difficulty with it. So let me come back around this way and do it upside down to the camera, unfortunately. I'll probably just jump ahead at this point anyway. Okay, I went through all the setup and set the uh, date, the time, and all the other initial features, time zone, and we're ready to go. It automatically looked like it formatted the SD card as soon as it came up. So with that, let me see if I can take my first picture with it. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around. Let me focus it other side of my room here. Let me catch the camera that I'm, that I'm looking at. Take a picture of my Lumix. This is not set for any particular mode, just to try it. I'll take another picture of this, of my other backup computer sitting there. What about a video? A little video of the other end over the room over there. I'll try to play the sound that's recording as, as well on this. Okay, it says it's recording. And I see sound on the screen. I come around, I can show my certificates. I can come around and show my computer screens here that I have up. The other side of the room. Plants. Okay. And that's with nothing set. Let me stop it. Here we go. A lot of nice little tone to it. Let me go ahead now and close it up and turn it off. Supposed to turn off, right, when I do that. Yeah, it did. It turned off by itself, just like they said. 
when you close it with the screen facing in. Okay, let me get this thing so that the grip will work. I have to put a battery in it, a 2032 that came with it. I have to open up this little door here. It's got a double latch, so I got to pull this little switch to the side, and then I got to push this one down, and then it that pops off. There we go. Cater here. You got to get it underneath this to actually hold the battery down. Make sure the battery goes with the plus side up. There's a little plus indicator here. You got to get it underneath this lip here on the top. So go tip underneath the top, push it down in. Now make sure you get these little two tabs in the bottom properly aligned in the bottom of this. Okay, push that in there. Make sure that they're both sides are seated before you push it down. And you just have to push it down, it's locked in place. So now this guy is powered. But now we have to do some changes to the camera before we can actually pair it. So if we turn the camera on, Let's go into the menuing system. And the menu that we want is part of the networking menu, the one that looks like the little globe there. So we want this one, and there's two little sub-menus. You see here it says two of two, right here in the corner. And we're gonna go down to Bluetooth settings. We click the center button here on this to activate that choice. And we will see that the Bluetooth function is currently off. That's the default. So I click the center button to change it. And then I arrow up to on. And I hit the center button again to select it. And now it says the Bluetooth function is on. Now I can go ahead and pair it. So if I go down one here and I click on this, it's waiting for me to pair. So I have to come back to the remote. And I've got to hold down the photo and the telephoto up. And it takes a few seconds, several seconds before it catches it. There we go. And then we come back to the camera and we hit, it's on OK. We've got to click on the center button again. Click OK. It's now paired, but it still won't work. We have to make one more change to the camera. So we click uh, OK to that. We're OK. We have it paired. And then we have to go down. Let's back up one more. You're going to have to hit the menu button to do a backup. You see the little things telling you as a hint here. Hit the menu button to back up menus. So we hit the menu button. And now we're going to have to go to Bluetooth Remote Control. By default, it's off. So for Bluetooth Remote Control, we're going to have to say, click on that one, center button. It is off. We go up to on, and we click on, and now it says on. And at this point, the Bluetooth should work. Let me back out of the entire thing. You hit the menu button to back all the way out to this. So what I'll do is I'll take the grip. It goes into vlogging mode. After all, this is the vlogging camera, right? Turn, you turn this little knob. This little knob that's underneath here is how you tighten it. It's got a nice little handy little tightener. Now it's in vlogging mode. So that's how it would normally look. So now the remote control should be working. Let me go ahead and see if it'll take a photo. I'll hit the photo button here and see if it does a photo. It did. It took a photo of this camera. So we got a camera taking a picture of a camera. I'll put that up on the screen. And then I will see if the telephoto works. It's already wide angle enough so I can only zoom in. There it goes. It's a little bit slow. I can actually hear it and feel it zooming. One thing about this camera, and if I want to do a video, all I have to do is hit the video, the movie button here, the red one. Now it's on. You see the little red dot here? That's the indicator. There's also one on the screen here that says that we are recording. So now we're recording my room again. And if I turn it around, it'll be recording me. Not bad, is it? Using the internal mic at this point, so I'll put this little video clip up into this one. So we'll see what it looks like and what it sounds like. And if I want to stop it, all I have to do is hit it again, the little record button, and it should stop. It did. Nice little tune to it. So now I got the, uh, the little vlogging grip working. I also like this because you can do adjustments to it. Let me turn it off first so I can show you that. Turn the thing off. To make adjustments to this, there are two ways of doing it. If you want to go up and down, you push this button on the right hand side here, push that in, and then the whole thing will go up or down. And it has a tensioning adjustment on the other side. If you want to make it a little bit go up and down a little easier, you loosen that up and it'll go up and down a little bit easier. Now, if you want to have it change this way, there's a little button here. You gotta push the button on this side here, right in the front, and if you push that button, the whole thing just turns in place, the whole top of the camera. So you can go a lot of different angles with it. 
It is just plastic, but a really strong, firm composite of some sort. And that's the camera. So there we go, we're all set. I'm gonna bring it outside now and just compare it. I'm gonna bring it with both cameras. I have that little small grip I showed in a previous video. I'm gonna put that on my other camera and I'll hold them together. Be very careful how I walk and uh, see what they produce and try to put them side by side in the final section of this video. Okay, I'm outside now. Playground nearby my home. Got the two cameras both being held in hand. I'll let you see each, uh, each of the cameras. This is my traditional camera that I use on a tripod normally when I'm making most of my videos. And here's the Here's the camera, the new Sony camera. So as you can see, they both have little grips on them. This is that grip that I reviewed last time, as you recall, right? Anyway, let me go ahead and compare the two. I got them both in 4K. I've made a few changes, and I'm going in sunlight. Now, I do have some features turned on. I do have some features turned on on the new Sony one. I want the actual exposure focused on my face. So we'll see how it goes. It's actually a little bit harder to get myself in frame with my Panasonic, but it's not meant really for doing blogging. So uh, that would be an example of uh, of one of the advantages of this camera, I guess. Even though it's a small framing compared to others like it, it still does quite well. Let me put them right in front of me. I'm walking on grass, of course, because I want to make sure I have a soft landing. I'll save the cameras and fall on my back if I have to, but uh, you know, I'm not going to waste these things. Walking out here in bright sunlight right now, let me put myself to the sunlight and see what it does. Put the sun behind me. What if I put the sun behind me and look up? I can't see much because the screen is washed out on both cameras. We'll see how that looks when I go into the editing. Got a nice background of a school here. I'm going to try the bokeh mode and see what that does. On this camera, my other camera doesn't have that. Okay, it looks like the bokeh mode should be on right now. It's hard to tell, the screen is washed out. The thing does go into lower amplitude according to what I read on a Sony camera whenever you're in the bokeh mode, which is basically the blurry background part of it. Let me do a quick turnaround here. See what it looks like. And then I'll turn it off. And I'll do a turnaround again. How does it look? So I just wanted to show the two cameras together, trying to use them as vlogging cameras. Obviously the Panasonic camera is about five times heavier. I can tell you that right now. Even the grip is made of aluminum, not this lightweight plastic. So that makes a big difference. I do have the, cent the center stabilization turned on to the Sony one. And I have stabilization turned on my lens. It is an option with my Panasonic, as you can see here. So I have the stabilization turned on. Let me turn it off and see if it makes a difference. Don't want to drop the camera. Turned it off. So stabilization is now off on the lens. It's one thing nice about the Lumix camera. It does have that option. Let's see what happens here as I'm just walking forward. I'm walking over concrete. I'll be very careful here. I'll see what the difference is when I get inside. The screen on my Panasonic is much brighter. It doesn't have the same concern about battery power. I think the battery lasts about the same though on it. Let me go ahead and switch these cameras. This one's too heavy for the other hand. That might be a little better. My right hand can handle the weight a little bit more than my left. So the stabilization is off right now. Let me turn the stabilization back on to this one.
I guess I could try turning the other stabilization. I won't do that right now. I got it on mid the middle, the standard stabilization on the Sony right now. So it might get better with the other one. Anyway, the point of this video was not for vlogging, even though that's what I'm doing right now. The point of this video was to show how I'm going to use the camera for my video creation. Now, I am a tech YouTuber, as I mentioned earlier, and so the focus will be on using it for that purpose. I really like the fact that the product showcase will help me, although I'm generally not showing products as much as I'm showing parts components that I may be putting into a build or something similar. So I think that will help. The wind is kicking up. Now I, I have a lapel mic on connected to my Panasonic. I have the regular onboard audio on the Sony, but I have the wind or the dead cat, let's be honest, put on there. So it should make it a little bit easier. Let me switch over to putting the uh, this mic on the Sony camera. Okay, now the mic has been switched over, the lapel mic has been switched over to the Sony camera, and I'm using the standard mic on my Panasonic. I have the stabilization on the lens on my Panasonic. I have the standard stabilization on the Sony. Let me turn on the bokeh mode again, see what that looks like, just a little button press. We'll see what that looks like. Should be on, should be off, should be on, okay. Anyway, I just want to do a quick little test of this here in a little park, open area, in bright sun, and we'll see how that, uh, that works out. So really this concludes the review. I will, well, really this concludes a box opening and a quick little review. I will be doing a much more detailed review of the Sony camera in terms of all the menus that I find important. Won't be covering them all, there's a lot there. And some of them don't apply to what I do. And also what, uh, what I have in terms of uh, applicable functions to how I do my videos for YouTube. So if you get something out of this video, find it enjoyable in any way. Definitely didn't drop a camera like I saw somebody do when they were reviewing it, that's good. Then I will, uh, if you could just do me a favor and consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it. So until the next time, take care and thanks for watching.